In this video, we're going to start looking at how we can figure out the amount of heat that transfers from one thing to another. So we're going to look at a process called calorimetry. It's the way that we measure heat transfer. And so what we have to do is use the temperature change of an object that we know the mass of and we know the specific heat of to figure out how much heat was absorbed or released in a process. And for this, we're going to use water. We know a lot about water. We know it's specific heat. It's easy to measure the mass. And we can figure out its temperature really easily as well. So when we do that, it's also cheap and readily available. Uh, we also use sometimes what's called a coffee cup calorimeter. So a coffee cup calorimeter is kind of a simple basic calorimeter. It's just a couple of styrofoam cups for insulation. And uh, inside the cup, there's a little stir to keep the water moving around and a thermometer so you can check the temperature. So what we do with this is we can add an object at a different temperature and figure out how much the temperature of the water changes. And one assumption that we make is that it's happening under constant pressure. So remember, we're at atmospheric pressure. It doesn't change a lot day to day. And so we can say in that case that Q equals delta H, the change in enthalpy. And so that just tells us that we can use our equations for Q. So let's look at a practice problem. So in this problem, we've got a sample of a metal. I'm going to draw now. You guys know how that goes. But I've got a sample of a metal. It's a little block, let's say. That's a good one. And it's been heated in a boiling water bath. So there's some boiling water. There's a little hot plate. And it's been heated and it's at 98.1 degrees C. And let's assume that the metal block's in there for a few minutes. Think about what the temperature of the metal block would be. Then it's placed in a coffee cup calorimeter. Here's the little thermometer sticking out. And there is 15.2 2.0 grams of water in that coffee cup calorimeter and it's at 22.3 degrees C. And then it says when you put the when you put the metal into the water the temperature increases to 27.5 degrees C. So I don't know if that helps you get a mental picture. I know my drawing skills are not very good. But you want to think about that as we're doing this. It's asking us for the specific heat of the metal. We don't know the metal, so we can't look it up on our reference table. So we're going to have to try to figure that out. So thinking about that, we said that we know that delta H is equal to Q. So we know that we can use our formula for Q equals MCP delta T. And so if we want to know the specific heat of the metal, we can use the heat that was lost by the metal because remember when we put something hot into something cold the heat is going to flow from the hot object to the cold object and so the temperature of the metal will go down the temperature of the water will go up and they will end up at the same place 27.5 degrees C in this case so the Q of the metal is going to equal the mass of the metal times the specific heat of the metal times the delta T of the metal all right so we can figure out from this that we, we know the mass of the metal. We can figure out the change in the temperature of the metal. It starts off at 98.1 degrees C, and it ends up at 27.5 degrees C. So that's fairly simple to calculate. The problem is we don't know how much heat was lost by the metal. So if you look at our problem, it was placed in the water. We have a lot of information about the water and we certainly know the specific heat about it. Uh, so we can go ahead and say that we know that the Q of the water would equal the mass of the water times the specific heat of the water times the delta T of the water. All right. And looking at our problem, we have the mass of the water. We have the specific heat because we can look that up on the front page of our reference table. And then we also can figure out the change in temperature of the water. It started off at 22.3 degrees and it ended up at 27.5. If we know how much heat went into the water, 
then we know how much heat left the metal. We're assuming that all the heat from the metal went into the water, that we didn't lose heat anywhere else. But if you think about it, that makes sense. So we know that the amount of heat that left the metal is going to be the same as the amount of heat that went into the water. One thing we have to think about, though, is the sign. So the heat leaves the metal and enters the water. So we're going to put a negative here on our Q of metal. It doesn't matter which one you put the negative on, just remember that they would have opposite signs. Okay? So let's go ahead and figure out our Q of H2O. It's fairly straightforward. We've got all the information we need in our problem. So we've got 15.20 grams of water. And our specific heat of water, you should look this up on your front page of your reference table, 4.18, and that unit is joules per gram degree C. And then for our delta T of the water, we want, remember, T final minus T initial. The water started at 22.3. That would be our initial temperature. After the hot metal block was added, the temperature increased to 27.5. So our delta T would be 27.5 degrees C minus 22.3 degrees C. And when you punch that into your calculator, you should get a number that looks like this. I got 330.4 and a few other digits. Remember at this point okay, that we don't need to worry about sig figs because that's not uh, part of our answer. So remember that grams will cancel grams, or degree C will cancel the degree C from these, and so we're left with joules, which is our unit of energy, so that makes sense. We know that, I'm just going to bump this down, we know that our Q that left the metal is equal to the Q that entered the water, so we know that the Q H2O is going to be the opposite sign of the Q of the metal. So if QH2O is 330.4, then we know that Q of the metal is going to be negative 330.4. Okay? And then we can just go ahead and solve our equation for specific heat. Um, I can just divide both sides by the mass of the metal and the delta T of the metal. And then that gives me an equation where I've got the problem solved for specific heat. And we can just plug in those numbers. Okay? So we know that Cp of the metal is going to equal Q of the metal over mass of the metal times delta T of the metal. And then it's just a matter of plugging in what we know from our problem. So we've already figured out how much heat left the metal. Negative 330.4 joules of heat. And then the mass of the metal was in our problem. It was 4.57 grams. And then our delta T, remember, is going to be the final temperature minus the initial temperature. I hope you drew my little sketch on your notes. And you can see that the metal started at 98.1 degrees Celsius, so that's its T initial. And when it cooled in the water bath, it ended up at 27.5. So its T final is 27.5 degrees C, and T initial is 98.1 degrees C. So you can see that both the metal and the water have the same final temperature. So you want to make sure that uh, you figure this one out. So let's go ahead and push this into your calculator. So CP of the metal, when I put that in, I got 1.02, and this none of these units cancel, so it's joules per gram degree C. Can you figure out what metal this is? Look it up on your reference table and see if you can tell. You can check it with me tomorrow if you're curious. All right? Let's try one more example like this so you can see it. They're, they're not too bad. So a similar problem. We've got a 9.31 gram piece of an unknown metal and it's put into a boiling water bath at 99.3 degrees Celsius. Then the metal is placed into a coffee cup calorimeter holding 25.31 grams of water with a temperature of 24.1 degrees Celsius. So when that chunk of the unknown metal is placed into the cooler water, 
the temperature of the water increases to 27.4 degrees C. Now the temperature of the metal also decreases to 27.4 degrees C. Remember that once the temperatures are the same, the heat stops flowing. So can we figure out the identity of this unknown metal? Let's go ahead. Remember that the first step is going to be to find the amount of heat that went into the water. So let's figure that out first. So Q of H2O is going to equal the mass of H2O times the specific heat of H2O times the change in temperature of H2O. So let's figure those out. First, our mass is 25.31 grams. And then our specific heat of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree C. Make sure that you have looked at your reference table so you know where this is. Remember on the test, you'll have to look it up on your own. And then our delta T is our T final minus T initial. So it tells us the initial temperature is 24.1 and then it rises to 27.4. So T final is 27.4 degrees C and we're going to subtract T initial which is 24.1 degrees C. Now my grams will cancel my grams, my degrees C will cancel here and so I end up with a unit of joules and what I got when I put this into my calculator was 349.13 joules. Now we know that that's our Q of H2O and we know that that's going to equal the negative Q of our metal, the amount of heat that went into the water, 349.13 joules, is the amount of heat that left the metal. So let's go ahead and calculate our specific heat of our metal. I'm going to bump this down. So we know that Q of the metal is equal to the mass of the metal times the specific heat of the metal times the delta T of the metal. If we're solving for specific heat, because that's what we'll use to identify this unknown metal, I'm just going to divide both sides by the mass of the metal and the delta T of the metal. And then we'll go ahead and set up our equation and plug everything in. So the masses will cancel, delta T will cancel, and we'll be left with CP of the metal equals the Q of the metal divided by the mass of the metal times the delta T of the metal. And then we can just plug in the information from our problem. So remember that our Q of the metal is going to be the same numerical value but with the opposite sign. So it's going to be negative 349 0.13 joules. And then the mass of the metal came from our problem. It's 9.31 grams. And then remember for our delta T we're going to do the final temperature minus the initial temperature of the metal. So remember that the final temperature of the water and the final temperature of the metal will be the same because that's when the heat stops flowing. And then the initial temperature of the metal was the temperature to which it was heated before it was put into the water, so 99.3 degrees C. And so when I put that in my calculator, I end up with the specific heat of the metal as 0 0.522, and again, my units here are joules per gram degree C. And it's asked for the identity of the metal. We didn't really have to worry about sig figs. You just want to make sure when you look it up, this number should be very, very close, within a few hundredths uh, of the particular uh, metal that we're looking for. And I won't ever give you a metal that has uh, another close metal with a similar specific heat. If you look this one up, I believe you'll find that this metal is titanium. All right. If you have questions about this, let's look at it together. And definitely ask me about it in class. I'll see you then.